Hey, how's it going? Hey, Jamie, how's it going? Yeah, not too bad. Um, it's been a while since we've done this, I guess. Um, but yeah, I, th I thought it'd be quite useful just for us to kind of chat about some of the things that we've seen at Jamstack.conf uh, when we were there last week. Um, just go over that briefly. Um, you know, we've certainly seen a lot of things that I think that um, really resonate with us because of the space that we're in with uh, like the Jamstack and e-commerce. Um, there's a lot of people at the the conference kind of talking about that. So um, if you go to go over that, go over um, what we think we have a solution for um, in the e-commerce and Jamstack, Jamstack space. Um, but yeah, how's it going anyway in general with you? Like it's been a while since we've done a video. Um, you still cranking away on the dashboard at Maltland? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little different, this format. Yeah. Used to be in uh, stood by your side. Well, hopefully Cover. we'll get back to doing get back to doing that um, now, now we're a few miles apart <laughs> yeah no yeah things, uh, yeah things are things are good at molten uh, yeah they are like uh, I'm, I'm still there so <laughs> it'll be great as long as features and, um, yeah we started work on a lot of tooling around around Gatsby which we're gonna gonna dive into in a bit yeah yeah so like one of the things that I kept seeing at Jamstack conf last week it didn't matter who I spoke to. Um, they were you were all kind of using different APIs to kind of build and output something in the Jamstack. So whether they were using a static site generator um, like Gatsby, um, they may integrate with like Stripe or um, you know other PIM providers and uh, e-commerce providers, uh, just to kind of provide an experience that works for everyone. And I think um, it was very early on. It was just talk. Um, I've forgotten who it was by now. Uh, you know, great, great, great preparation for for this chat. But um, there was a talk very early on talking about uh, building e-commerce uh, store. Um, I think it was by Sarah Dresner. Yes, Sarah. Um, talking about the View Store that she created, and you know, using parts of was it Stripe she was using? Um, yeah. For the, for the checkout, and she, you know, when she was adding to cart, that was all kind of just happened in, in state. But um, if you think about the things that have to, you know, everyone has to implement the same kind of logic. When I add something to the cart, I have to calculate the, the new total. If there's any tax items and promotions, I kind of have to do all this. Um, you know, and it gets a bit repetitive and um, annoying time after time when you're kind of building these stores. So one of the things we've got at Molten is, you know, an API for e people who are building e-commerce stores. So if you are adding a product to the cart, will return the updated quantities. And I think that's, you know, a real powerful piece and it's so simple. Um, but if you if you are building a, a Jamstack site and using a static site generator in that stack, then really you can worry about the catalog wherever that's coming from. It doesn't have to come from Molten. It could come from a, um, a CMS. Uh, it could come from just a file system. And the actual e-commerce logic, you know, we take care of that. You abstract all that logic to the cloud um, and you know, with us. So that was really interesting. I think um, you know, people kind of doing things are all diff in different ways to kind of do the same thing. And this e-commerce and the Jamstack still it still feels like a very open playing field for everyone. Um, but I think with what we'll talk about with themes, um, you know, I think we've got a solution there that that helps everyone. So what what was the thing that stood out most for you at, at Jamstack Conf? Was there anything that kind of stood out and you're like, oh wow, I'm impressed by that or yeah, um, or is it just like confirmation that people are doing the same thing as us or the industry is moving the same way? Like, what was it? Yeah, I think it was just kind of the um, collective kind of energy around the, the whole kind of space. Um, spoke to a lot of different players in in the space, whether that be kind of a headless CMS, other commerce uh, players such as Commerce Layer, or there's, um, you know, we, we actually spoke to uh, one of the engineers from the Gatsby team, uh, Gatsby had a stall there as well. So really just kind of speaking to everybody, um, seeing how people are building websites, see how people are wanting to build commerce sites and seeing that um, a lot of people are stitching, like you said, a lot of services together to build, um, you know, a commerce website now. In the past, a lot of people would be using the entire Shopify stack or the entire Magento stack. Now people are pulling pieces from X, Y, and Z, um, whether that be, you know, contentful for your products and then using Stripe as a payment processor. Um, I think, you know, there's a lot to be said about 
that whole concept and Gatsby uh, makes using all of these services together a breeze really um, yeah yeah I think one 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 kind of thing that was clear was that there was no real um, kind of big player in the in the carts and checkout space um, seemed like there was a, a, a kind of a hole there to fill for somebody so yeah maybe that's where we come in yeah yeah it's certainly a interesting space and like you say there is a hole um, especially when it comes to Jamstack people are kind mm-hmm. of looking well I've got this thing that's statically built and I've got a bit of you know dynamic thing going on in the uh, in, in the front end like what do I do um, so yeah I think now that Gatsby have announced that themes are out of the experimental phase and they kind of you know you know the, the generally available to everyone now you know that's what we're going to show next so uh, the Gatsby theme Molten is something that you originally started as an idea, as an idea, a proof of concept back when this was very experimental. Um, since then, we've kind of collaborated on adding a few things to it. Um, right now, it's very like catalog based, so it will go to Molten and get all of that product data for you, um, and then kind of build product pages, whether that be a single product page or a collection of products on one page, or if it's a you know all of your products by brand, by category category or by collection, we kind of just abstract all that logic and create that by default and provide some uh, options that you can configure um, for the, you know, the, the path uh, of those for the URL. Um, but I don't know. Um, let's, I don't know. Do you want, should we have a look around the, the repo and see, see what it's doing? And then we can maybe try and build a site with this. Um, but, you know, it's very basic right now because yeah. it's still very early days, but um, right now it's purely just static catalog data um, and the next version uh, will be uh, will be releasing the cart functionality to actually add products to the cart um, so you know we should do a video definitely on that on that part as well um, I don't know yeah. you, you take you give us a tour of like what's what's going on here I think it'd be interesting to start um, kind of where the concept was born so we at Molten we kind of always try to have reference applications or demo applications around popular frameworks that people are using to build on the platform. Um, and Gatsby is one of those. So um, myself and Jamie kind of worked on this uh, Gatsby demo store, which as you can see is... Jamie uh, is in me. What's that? <laughs> Jamie is in me. <laughs> Jamie is in you. Um, you kind of just talking about me in the third person. It was great. <laughs> Is that what, what did I just say? I don't even know. Myself and Jamie built this. <laughs> well, I built a source plugin. Yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, you can see you know, this is blazing fast. Uh, this is all statically rendered um, at build time, which is the power of Gatsby. But obviously, with commerce, there's dynamic elements. Um, so as you can see, um, on this product in particular, we're actually kind of doing a lookup for inventory. Um, so because Gatsby, whilst static and generated, also rehydrates uh, into a React app, we're able to actually get data dynamically uh, on page load, which is what we're doing in this instance as well. Also, that lends itself to the car concept. So we have the car here, which is powered by Molten's API. Uh, we can uh, increase, decrease uh, quantity there. We can add uh, promotion. As you can see, it's the duct in there. I can remove that. You know, so this is where the idea for the theme was built built from. So the idea is that we've got this demo store. We want to abstract all this logic and all this um, boilerplate code into a theme so that um, anybody using Molten can spin up a Gatsby-powered store with very little configuration. Um, So that's kind of where it started. Yeah, and, and like you say, it's always important to have these reference applications because like we have here, we have a Gatsby site, but this could, you know, this store could be built in any front end framework or, you know, it doesn't even need a front end framework almost. Um, but you could use whatever to kind of create this. And, you know, really what we're kind of demonstrating here is um, this whole headless approach. So this data doesn't exist within the site files. It's just somewhere else. And they add into cart, all that logic takes place somewhere else. Um, you know, and like that, all that button is doing is making a network request and that button send along the product ID of what you wish to add to the cart and the quantity. And what happens behind the scenes and the data that's returned is really um, the benefit of using any type of API. Um, you know, you really want to abstract as much as that 
of that logic as possible to someone else because it's just a lot of overhead to maintain um you know and if if, if we can replicate what we've got in the store here to the the actual theme then it makes it really powerful it's it's just a plug and play store that anybody can kind of turn on and uh, add commerce pretty much instantly to their to their website um cool. but yeah I'm, I'm excited to see the next phase of this with the actual theme um certainly a lot, yeah. lot of things to do but it's uh you know it's very promising because it does it does kind of show that you can just turn on commerce with a simple yarn install or yarn ad. Yeah. So I guess conceptually, like Gatsby themes kind of stitches it together a lot of concepts from Gatsby. So it's got this idea of, um, you know, your theme can not only provide data, as in, which is what I was just doing with uh, our source plugin. Um, I can't type. So we have um, our long repo. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is the uh, source plugin, which is actually kind of uh, getting the data from the API. Um, mm. And the theme actually extends that. So if we look in the package JSON here, we can see it has a dependency. Uh, oops, wrong package JSON. If I actually go in the pattern. Yarn workspaces. Yeah, so if we look in here, we actually see there's a dependency on the uh, source plugin there. So the idea yeah. is with the themes is that you kind of compose on all, all these little concepts and ideas around Gatsby into a single package that can be um, installed to deliver an experience. And these themes as well can be kind of paired together. So you can have a theme within a theme um, and they can kind of stack up. So one common <laughs> thing that people are doing is you know they'll have a Gatsby site which might be um, a regular marketing site or, or a blog and then they've got um, a slash store route which is actually powered by a separate theme entirely i.e. maybe the molten theme yeah um, so we've added that to the configuration where you can kind of determine the build path for the site so um, there's a lot of there's a lot of possibilities here in configurability um, and that's kind of the beauty of it um, we haven't yeah. even touched the surface really on um, actually configuring the appearance of it and um, that that's yeah. going to be possible as well so what we have now is as Jimmy said very kind of basic um, it'll just kind of get your data and render it in some components for you um, but we're going to kind of um, Extend this a lot, as he said, carts, uh, checkouts, inventory lookup, um, also configuring the appearance. Um, one interesting thing about um, themes is component shadowing. Um, do you want to talk a bit about that? Yeah, I think it's quite. I think it's quite a new, it's like, it's quite a new thing that um, opens the doors to a lot of a lot of possibilities. So, in the, in the case of a theme. Um, like, I don't know what the easiest way to put this is, like not explain what a theme is, but if, if we look back at like traditional themes for a website, like take Shopify, for example, you have a theme to customize it. You have to just edit the theme. Um, you know, you can kind of make a backup and save files. Like traditionally, whenever I worked on that stuff in the past, it was, you would save the index page as like a backup file and then you would go and make your changes. And then you'd see what they look like. Um, but like, it was up to you to kind of implement the like re-implement the logic or keep the logic in the thing that you're editing but more often than not it was it was not really the implementation and the logic that you were really changing it was just the appearance and mm -hmm. where things maybe uh, belong and if you wanted to hook in and add any additional data um, or any additional handlers then it became a bit of a mess to see where that like belonged so with component shadowing it's great because for example if you had the um what we got here is the category section so listen out the name of the category and then the product grid below. If you wanted to put the, if you wanted to remove the, the title completely of the category here, or you wanted to put the, the product grid above, then all you need to do is create a file at the same path that resolves to the theme. And you can, you get access to all the same props um, and you can import components that are exported from the theme and reuse yeah. those, um, which is, you know, it's, it's quite incredible because you don't have to worry where the data comes from. Uh, you can send event handlers down as well. So kind of the logic like 
if we take add them to cart, for example, the logic to make those network requests, you don't have to ever touch. Um, of course, you could extend those parts if you wanted to, but with component shadowing, you could literally just update the button. Um, to you know, it could be a button that's got a quantity picker. The quantity picker could be a select or an input or whatever. As long as what that returned and called in the handler that's passed down, that is that kind of logic's just sent away and um, mm. dealt with. So component shadowing make it super easy to kind of customize and extend uh, Gatsby themes. Um, mm. That's kind of my take on it, and, and where I see most value. Um, you, you, yeah. So I, I don't know if there's anything else that that stands out with you, the component shadow. It's fairly a new concept to me. Yeah. It's as you said. It's uh, kind of takes away the pain of customizing a theme. You know, I remember the days of uh, having to completely rewrite a theme just to change the color of. Yeah. a button or the color of a div background and like that so um you know all this all this conceptually comes together and you can just kind of change one uh, value in a config and yeah. uh, update the color or you can change um the structure of the kind of rendered component in the file by importing something that's exported from the theme you know so it's um yeah. pretty powerful yeah that's cool um, so what should we do first? Should we show people what the end result of the theme looks like or should we just try and do this thing from scratch in a new Gatsby project and see what it gives us? Um, we could, yeah, let's, let's just kind of, uh, I guess we could just dive into um, a new project. Yeah, so we're just gonna use like Gatsby New or MPX Gatsby New or whatever it is, um, create a new Gatsby site. Um, yeah. Actually, I'm going to do it probably old school and just <laughs> not even use one of the, the stars. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so all Gatsby React. Uh, so this is the, the old school, like, uh, you know, 10x dev, uh, 10x engineer way. That's it, 10x, 10x engineer. <laughs> I can barely see my F key. <laughs> uh, okay, so now we have um, we have the Gatsby app essentially. Um, what I'm going to do is all that's really required to actually build is is that our Gatsby config? Yeah. Module export um, plugins, just an array, and. Uh, yeah, so it's going to resolve to uh, Molten, Gatsby theme, Molten. For this and that Gatsby, that, yeah, that Gatsby theme prefix as well is like a convention for the theme that expects to right. see that, is that right? Yeah, so the, there's kind of a Gatsby convention for naming things. So they'll have like Gatsby hyphen plugin hyphen um, sharp. Well, there's yeah. transformers as well. So it's Gatsby hyphen transformer. Um, it's Gatsby source, which is generally a plugin that fetches data from a source, so it's Gatsby source molten. And now theme is also that convention. Um, so we've got the kind of score package here, that's just a molten thing, that's just how we prefer to do things. We prefer everything scored, so it's kind of uniform. Yeah, I've seen that a lot more these days as well. People, as the registry fills up, um, yeah, you know, people are scoping their package. Um, so yeah, so this plugin accepts uh, an options hash, and there's an array of options which is documented here. Um, so of all the options, there's only actually one required. That's the client ID of your molten store. Um, everything else is kind of what we talked about before. The base path of the theme. Um, so yeah, this by default it will everything will be mounted at the root of your Gatsby site. If you want to um, have that live at slash shop, then this is configurable. Uh, the same with the specific paths for each resource. Yeah, that's cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually install the uh, theme. So it's just a regular NPM package. So what that will have brought with it is it'll have brought the source plugin with it, which the theme uses to 
uh, actually source the data from molten. Yeah. So if we look at our package JSON now, we've got the theme there. Um, so what I need to do is actually just give it a client ID. And I'm going to get this from Molten. Um, so this is uh, our store here. We have some products, as you can see, some uh, brand, collection, categories. So what we'll see is we'll actually have a, um, a Gatsby stack site that compiles all of those, uh, that, that will fetch that data from Molten and compile that to stack pages yeah. for us to actually navigate. Just get that from here. Always use uh, environment variables. <laughs> if you're actually using production code, this is just a quick little thing also. I can get away with it. Okay, so now <laughs> we should be able to use Gatsby develop. And what to see now is, um, the theme is actually gonna kind of run all of the uh, kind of node APIs that Gatsby provides us. So we can see here we're running the static queries, running page queries, and I also generate image thumbnails. So it's actually yeah. getting the images from Molten um, or from S3 in this instance and uh, downloading those as local assets, which makes them so fast. Yeah. So we can actually open this. So as you can see, we're in the root here. Uh, we don't actually have anything on the index page currently, and um, that's that will be coming. Oops. But if I go to slash products, we've got our products here. Cool. Yeah. And all you did there was install a node module, set a environment variable, or not in this case, um, set your client ID and you have all of your products from Molten inside a Gatsby site that's on a path. Um, and then if we dive into a bit further, can you, you be able to click on one of those as well? That'll yeah. take you to the actual product page. Yeah. And then all of, the, all of this is kind of just, again, that logic of creating the paths and the pages, it's just taking care of you within the Gatsby theme. Right, so one thing as well is, um, Molten has a concept of relationships. So you have, you can relate all your data uh, your catalog data amongst each other. So you have categories, collections, brands, and um, products can belong to all of those. Um, so for example, you can have a category here, we've got a desk lamp category, and they have particular products which belong to them. Yeah. So the, the source plugin is actually doing that work for us. It's fetching that related data and making that relationship that we can query with GraphQL yeah. inside of the theme. Um, so and if you clicked on desk lamps as well, yeah. that would take you to the actual category, yeah, which again has another product grid. Yeah. And then we can go there to the product, go back here, uh, floor lamps, that's great. Um, take a look at collections, couple of collections, bedroom lamps. So yeah, as you can yeah. see all of these products, it's all the same products, but it's that's the kind of, the web of all the relationships that are set up in the Molten API. Um, so it really kind of powerful, and that's how a lot of people structure e-commerce sites. They'll have like a, a category list, and they'll have collections and brands and so on. So, um, yeah. one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually um, kind of show the base path though. Fingers uh, crossed. So we just need to add. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, store because I'm original or shop or shop or anything you really want. Even, yeah. you know what? So I'm just going to do that's be clean. And now rebuild my site. So again, Running those stat queries, running those page queries, getting all the data from Molten, generating the image thumbnails, which we can see. Um, built again. So if I go back, all of my tabs. So if I go to this route now. Hmm. I think that's because it's an index page. Uh, yeah, so that's the index page in the theme. So the actual base paths just for the products, I think, at the moment. 
when we come to do the homepage, it will be reflected. I think that's what that is. Okay. We'll just pretend that didn't happen. Signal. Or... No, we, we just, we're just not implement. No, no, that's fine. So if you go back, like, yeah. we haven't implemented the homepage, but if you go to slash store. Molten. Uh, slash molten, yeah. Um, and then you see the list of pages we got built. You can see every all the product pages are prefixed right, with I see molten. molten. There so you, you go, go there, yeah. it's there. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's completely uh, customizable. Uh, slash cut, yeah. Got a bug? We got a bug, found a bug. Yeah, so those, those uh, kind of, uh, it's, in, uh, it's, yeah, it's still still those pages have been yeah. built. Uh, yeah. We'll make a note of that. Um, but yeah, that's, so right now it's pretty basic, but it's pretty easy to get started. Um, and what's, what's next up for this? Uh, fixing those bugs and um, I think, you know, adding the add to cart button and then having that um, add, add to cart. So there's some yeah. global con uh, context that we can kind of share across all of these different pages. Um, you know, yeah. some other little things that I think, you know, we started to work on was the, the ability in the product grid. Uh, although it doesn't look like a product grid at the moment, if we wanted to um, kind of toggle between a view and a, a list view and a grid view, we kind of just want to create that little helper almost uh, as context and expose it to the component so we can drop in a simple toggle component that will switch between list and, uh, a list and grid view. Um, and then people, you know, anyone can take this and they can override it and update the appearance or add in a third option and update the same context. So, you know, that, that's a nice little helper. And I think, how, you know, how many times do you go on a website and you see there's different views for something, whether it be a grid, a, 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 I find it really hard to say those two words, a grid or a list, um, you know, yeah. some even like a, a map view, but being able to toggle between different uh, views, like, we can abstract that logic for you and just put it into the theme. So you kind of just need to do some component shadowing to, you know, customize it if you really want it. Otherwise, it'll just be baked into the uh, product grid component. Yeah. Yeah. So no, that's cool. Um, that's the big. I, I, I guess you get the you get all the benefits from um, React. We get all the good all the React goodies context. Um, you know. Yeah, yeah, all the all the new hook stuff, everything. So, yeah, um, I guess that makes everything a lot easier to build yeah. the developer. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I think there's, um, you know, as we begin to build this out even more, there's going to be tons of new ideas that we have to add to this and try and abstract as much logic as we can. Um, you know, when we're looking at this original demo here, we've got the quantity picker, which is a select drop down. We've got the add to cart. We've got the inventory. Um, things like on sale, which comes from our flows API. There's so much we can talk about um, and so much we can integrate. Um, but certainly the next steps, I think, for us is to um, get the cart working and maybe it's the um, product grid, get that kind of styled up or maybe it's not styled up, but kind of, you know, tr figure out that, that logic um, that happens. Because we want to make the kind of columns customizable, right, as well. So, like, you can see, um, you know, three or four, uh, columns per row for, for products, yeah. etc. Yeah, so we can handle that with the context as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think we should check in next week, see how much progress we made. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Let's check in again same time next week and go over what's going on. Um, cool. So I'll let you take a look at those bugs, um, and then we'll uh, we'll pick up pick up next week. Sounds good. Cool. Oh, well, it was great to catch up. Um, hopefully we can get a regular cadence on this um, and keep them coming. Move the needle. Catch you later. See you, man.